partakers of her sins. Read and receive ye not of her plagues. Go ahead. For her sins have reached up into heaven, and the God have remembered her iniquities. Go ahead. Beware her even as she has rewarded, rewarded you. Go to the first verse. Revelations 18 and 1. And these things I saw. Another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. It's what? It's fallen, it's fallen. This place is fallen, it is fallen. And how do you know it's fallen? It's fallen. You can't compare The power in which we spend, the power that we're spending right now, is worth nothing in the global economy. You can't even switch the dollars for euros. Now even the Middle Easterns are doing what? They're switching, they're, they're, they're switching, they're purchasing oil or they're selling the oil through the dollar and they're switching it to the euro. So what is that doing? That's destroying the value of our dollar bill. That's why America went over to the Middle East they went over the Middle East because Saddam Hussein had a plan in, in, in selling oil through euros instead of American dollars. This place is about to fall, folks. I'm telling you, listen, the Bible is telling you it's falling. So what are you going to do? I know what you're going to do because Christ said it. Christ says, like in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. People want to be marrying, giving in the marriage. You know what? People are not going to do nothing. They're going to continue to be the way they are. Until the destruction hit. Then you're going to panic. The same way during the time of Noah. Can you imagine that? Noah prophesied for 120 years, and people thought he was simple. They thought he was stupid. Get a job, Noah! What are you doing? Oh, hey. Think about 50 years in, he's still prophesying on the people. That, this guy need to get a job. What are you doing, Miller? Building an ark on dry land. And then at the end of that 120 years, the Lord told Miller, listen, go up in that ark, he shut him in. The same people that was mocking him and laughing at him and that was partying and acting like everything was okay. It started raining. And they were like, well, it ain't, it ain't nothing to this. It, it rained before. It rained before, ain't nothing to this. Then it started raining and raining. Then the Lord opened up the clouds, and the clouds just started flooding the earth. The seas started rising. That's the first time the waters left their borders of the sand. They totally consumed mankind. They tell you in the book of Jasher, that these simple people that didn't want to follow when it was time took garden tools and tried to break into the ark. They figured they were going to break their way in. The Most High sent sharks. It was blood all around the ark. The blood of the same people that was partying. That was telling Noah, get a job! That didn't want to listen. Same thing today. We're telling you something is coming. Even your president is telling you something is coming. Who's telling you that, listen, we gotta, we gotta try to bail out these corporations and bail out these banks. They don't see light at the end of the tunnel, folks, do you? Do you? You can't see light on, at the end of the tunnel. I know George Bush don't see light on the end, at the end of the tunnel because he just bought himself some land outside the country. <laughs> if he's talking about leaving, what are you going to do? Read. Babylon the Great is falling, it's falling. It's become, and it's become the habitation of devils. This place has become the habitation of devils. This place has become the habitation of devils. Devils is running this country, man. Devils is running our society. Devils is running our neighborhoods. Devils, demons, spirits. 
Is this place known for righteousness? Piety? Uprightness? Love? All the things they claim this country is? Or more so, is it known for murder? Destruction? Espionage? Corruption? What is we known for, man? Wickedness. And one big sign, one of the greatest signs that we're near the end is this homosexual epidemic. It's an epidemic, man. A brother brought out a couple of weeks ago how these homosexuals use the rainbow as their emblem. <laughs> When the rainbow was actually, the rainbow was actually an agreement that the Most High God made with man after the flood that he will not dis utterly destroy the earth anymore. The rainbow represents the Most High's covenant with man. And they turned a perfectly good covenant that God made with man into their emblem of wickedness and abominations. We know that we're near the end. Anytime it's normal to see women running around looking like dudes. And men running around flaming, flaming out of and greased up and looking like I don't know what. Supposed to be playing men's sports and running around with fingernail polish and all types of madness. This is Sodom and Remorse. That's how you know we're near the end. There's no more loyal. There's, there's no more loyalty anymore either. There's no commitment anymore. We can't even make a commitment to ourselves, let alone to someone else we love, who we claim to love. Read on. In the gate, in the hole of every foul spirit. This place is the hole of every foul spirit. Here's another sign. Not only is homosexuality is a sign, Another sign, give me Matthew the 24th chapter, let me give you some signs. Another sign is when you'll be living in a society where a nation would come against nation. That means one nationality against another nationality. And you can see that brewing, brewing all in our media. Y'all don't notice that, do you? There is something brewing between black and white people. I know you, it's an 800 pound gorilla in the room that no one want to talk about, but it's the truth. There's something brewing. You have, you have, you have these rednecks out in the Middle East talking about if Barack Obama become president, which he will become president, that it will be war. You have a journalist, Fatima Ali, that wrote about it, saying, listen, y'all talking about a race war, it's already a race war. It just haven't, it just haven't got physical yet. And that's the truth. When all this stuff breaks out here, and there's no food in the neighborhoods, and people are sitting up in the neighborhoods, chilling, looking at TV with, with, a, with a refrigerator full of food, where do you think the brothers are going to go to get some food? <laughs> You think they're going to let their children starve? Here it is, they don't even have a corner store and you sitting there looking at the ball game. Shoot. No. It's going to be a war here. Nation against nation. Let me read it. Christ warned us of this. Right now, there's a posturing on each one, both sides. It's a solid posturing and everyone can see it brewing, but no one's talking about it. We're going to talk about it. Let's not talk about race. We can't talk about race. Why can't we? Why can't we? The Bible is a book that talks about race. There's a race of people in the Bible that are serving captivity. That's a race. Every empire that ruled was one race ruling over the other people. It was one race against other races. The Persians. One time rule, it was the Persians against everybody else. The Egyptians and Meta Africans, they were ruling, they were against everyone else. Right now, you got the Edomites with the European powers that are Idumeans ruling, 
They're ruling, they're against everyone else. So this whole thing, the Bible, is broken down on race. So we must talk about it. Because Christ said at the very end that nation shall be against nation. And don't think it's a, don't, don't think it's a coincidence that there's a black running against a white at this time in history. It's no coincidence. People don't want to vote for John McCain. Like we said last week, this dude got one leg in, in the grave, in the graveyard. But yet, it's a close race. Why? Because you have some people, even though they may 